Uh, welcome to the computer networks course uh, this is the third video for chapter one introduction to computer networks and the internet we will discuss about network core in this particular video so what's uh, what are the scope of discussion we will learn about packet switching circuit switching and also the internet structure Okay, let's go back to the internet structure that um, the diagram that has been um, so showed before shown before we have seen this diagram before the network core consists of interconnected routers what are these routers um, do basically the the, the, the the main function of the routers are to do the packet switching what are the packet switching packet switching is um, whenever the host in the end system will send the message to the destination it will break the, pack, uh, the host into smaller chunks of package and these routers the network core router will forward the package from one router to another router uh, from the source to the destination so basically those two function are the main function of network core okay let's see this uh, schematic regarding the first uh, function of the router whenever a package whenever a package arrive to the router this the router will decide whether the package will be forwarded into um, intersection one or intersection 2 or intersection 3 this action is called forwarding the decision to forward um, the package whether to the channel 1 2 or 3 is maintained using the bigger picture of routing second function because one router with one another are interconnected to each other and both of them are managed using this particular algorithm called routing algorithm in which they decide uh, from which path the package will be delivered from the source to destination so this two function forwarding is like a micro managing of the package the routing is macro manage um, uh, managing view so the micro view is the forwarding micro view of the forwarding the macro view is is the routing okay let's see how it works again there will be simple illustration here if you for example open your google map and decide to travel from one city to another city you will be given a route a path definitive path from one city to another city the decision uh, and creating this path is called routing this is routing the micro view of the travel and whenever you get the the, um, the path and you come to a particular intersection you have to decide whether you have to, to choose the first channel the second channel or the third channel so you can uh, safe rightly uh, arrive safely to the destination this micro view of um, uh, the path is called forwarding so we can easily say that the forwarding and routing is to uh, uh, inseparable function of network core okay let's take a look um, to, to the more uh, micro view of the routers and also the host and the client for example if we have um, a client that that will send the package from this host to this router the host will have to transmit a package L push it to the link of R bits per second bandwidth in this case the times um, needed for transmitting the package is called transmission delay it's called transmission delay if we have 
several router to transmit the package we, we usually call it one hop transmission this is one hop transmission the next part we will call second hop transmission so if you want to send the package from this host to this destination we will need two hops of router to transmit this package in this case the package must have to arrive to the intermediate router before it can be forwarded to the destination so the packet switching is all about storing and forwarding the package okay let's take a look to another chapter uh, let's see the illustration here if we can see from one host to another host they will have several links the first link is from the road um, the host to the first router we can see that the bandwidth of this channel is 100 megabit per second and then the package must must go through the smaller link so can you expect what will happen in, if this um, a condition happen the package will come to the router as fast as possible but the router cannot push or transmit the package because the capacity of the bandwidth the second one is smaller than the first one so most of the package will be queuing in this router waiting for them to be transmitted to another to another router this condition is called queuing because they have to queue before being transmitted well you can also um, uh, take a look or uh, make an example of whenever you want to travel you have to use for example bus and you have to queue to before getting onto the bus itself this queuing this queuing process have a negative impact so simply if there are a big queue in this router they will have some limitation in terms of the buffer uh, storage within the uh, within a particular router so what will happen if the queuing package is larger than the buffer capacity of a particular router? those unaccommodated um, package will be dropped and when the package is dropped this condition is called package loss well, it's a condition that we we all um, didn't want to happen because whenever a package lost the sender must resend retransmit the package so it can arrive arrived at the destination okay well is there any alternative to the packet switching yes the alternative to packet switching is called circuit switching so instead of um using a same using the same channel by different package or different users in circuit switching we will separate a channel into into different circuit different channel so each users can dedicatedly use um, a particular channel without sharing its channel with the other user or the other clients so in this term uh, the transmission is guaranteed because you know the transmission rate are only used by a particular users and uh, they will uh, have a dedicated performance dedicated services for this particular um, circuit another analogy for this packet switching versus circuit switching is it's like uh, the the race the car race the racing car for example f1 racing car compared to the marathon marathon competition the olympiad you can see that in terms of the lane circuit lane the car racing they will use the same particular channel and uh, all together and changing the line uh, between between the com uh, between the race the, the racing car but if you see the uh, marathon for example competition each runner will have a dedicated circuit for for each one they will not interchangeably use uh, the circuit 
but instead they will focusly on a particular circuit. So that's the uh, simple analogy of packet switching versus circuit switching. Okay. Uh, well, when we're discussing about the differences between packet switching and circuit switching, there is no such lies like uh, one is um, better than another. No, but you have to learn what is what are the pros of using packet switching and what are the cons of using it. And also, what are the pros of using circuit switching and what are the cons of using packet switch, circuit switching. When when is the ideal condition of using packet switching? When is the ideal condition of using circuit switching? Okay, in terms of circuit switching, we have two different um, methodology. The first one is frequency division multiplexing. So basically, if we have one big channel, we will separate those into several different frequency. For example, in this in this um, example, we will separate this channel into four different channel. And each user will um, use the channel dedicatedly. dedicatedly. Uh, on the on the opposite time division, division multiplexing TDM will divide the channel into slots of time. So they will not divide into channel, but slots of time. And then each user will use whole of the channel, but limited to each time slots. So they will use it um, interchangeably. For example, five minutes being used by user A, and then the next five minutes will be used by user B, and so on and so forth. Okay, so you have to uh, distinguish between FDM versus TDM. When is the best time to use FDM? When is the best time of, use, uh, of using TDM? Okay. okay, now let's see to the real um, uh, question of packet switching versus circuit switching. Let's see if this example. For example, given um, a link with bandwidth 1 gigabit per second, and then any particular user that will use this particular channel will require 100 megabit per second whenever they active. So, how many users? can use this network under circuit switching versus packet switching scenario. In, in circuit switching scenario, we can easily divide the total bandwidth 1 gigabit per second divided by the requirement of each user's 100 megabits per second. So at a particular time, there will be, there will be 10 users being active using uh, the channel at the same time. How about the packet switching? Packet switching didn't didn't divide the channel equally between the users, but they will use it all together. So with 35 users, probability that there are more than 10 users active at the same time is less than 0 0.0004. So basically, in packet switching scenario, they can accommodate more users compared to the circuit switching users. Okay. Uh, again, when we are um, being, uh, we are discussing something like versus something in this case packet switching versus circuit switching. There are no like uh, one method being superior than another. In this case, what you have to learn is you have to know when when is the best situation, when is the best scenario you are using packet switching and what when is the best um, situation when you should use circuit switching so in the simple terminology circuit switching is like reserve resource allocation compared to the on-demand resource allocation for packet switching okay that's all about packet switching versus circuit switching now we uh, move to the internet structure Again, we, we will see this uh, network of networks diagram. So in this case, we can see that any host or any end system that want to connect to the internet, they have to access it through internet service provider or ISP. So in this case, ISP must be connect interconnected each to other because, well, that's how um, the package can be sent from the source from, to the destination. So, what are um, what are 
uh, factor or aspects that drive this kind of uh, network of networks management. Well, network of networks uh, managements are very complex and it's not only driven by the economics aspect, it it's also can be influenced by the national policy, politics, uh, and other aspects uh, uh, beside the technical aspect and also the economic aspect. So let's take a look uh, how different ISP can be interconnected to each other. Let's say we have these millions of ISP access. How to connect them together? We can say that, well, we just connect them directly from one ISP to another ISP. Is this the right way? Well, the answer is no. This type of access is not scalable. It's um, quadratic complexity and it's definitely not scalable. So what's the actual um, method to connect those ISP together? Uh, there is one entity called global ISP in the middle of the ISP. So the every ISP that that want to connect um, to the internet will connect to the global ISP. In this case, the business of uh, providing global ISP services is very well valuable. So yes, based on the economic of um, ISP, there will be more than one global ISP, and those global ISP will be connected to each other like this. Is that it, um, uh, the structure of our internet? Well, no. The global ISP is like international recognized company. And in terms of smaller ISP, there is um, there is organizations called regional ISP. They will, uh, they will have direct access to the consumer for each regional, and they also will connect it to the global ISP. How about another actors that um, take take a, a, a important part in this network? There is company that's called content provider network, such as Facebook, Google, Microsoft. They are not telecommunication company, but they are providing services for uh, network and internet applications. So they are not uh, basically use the ISP infrastructure. They usually have their own um, uh, infrastructure. So in this diagra diagram, they are overlaying the whole ISP. So if we want to take a look to the actual um, hierarchies of the uh, ISP, the tier one or the global ISP uh, is, is in one level with the content uh, provider network. And below that, there are regional ISP and then the uh, actual access ISP that we are using all together. The exercise for this um, diagram, please research, do research in Indonesia, what are the companies that's, that's considered local access ISP, what are the companies that are that called regional ISP or tier 2 ISP, and what are the tier 1 ISP. That's all for um, this video. Thank you very much. Uh, see you again in the next video.